What's up YouTube, Mike here again. And today I wanted to do kind of a quick review of the 2016 15 inch MacBook Pro with Touch Bar. A lot of you guys were asking on my channel if I was ever gonna review one of these. And I bought this the other day and um, I wanna give you my thoughts. Now obviously this has been out for about six months now so I'm not gonna necessarily waste your time giving you spec by spec. I'm not gonna do any B-roll footage on this showing you the close-ups and all that. It's already out there, you've seen it. Now this is mostly, I just wanna give you my thoughts on this machine having used it. Now obviously I'm coming from Windows 10 and using either Surface Book or Surface Pro 4, but the reason I bought this is because about four weeks ago, I bought a, not an iPad Air, but I bought a MacBook Air from Best Buy and it was on sale, I think for $800. And I got it because I've been wanting to try Final Cut Pro for the longest time. And, you know, I've seen videos showing it how optimized it is for the software. So long story short, I bought a MacBook Air. It was the 13-inch with 8 gigs of RAM and an i5, the lowest end you could get. <clears throat> I installed Final Cut Pro on it, and I was able to edit 4K video, and it actually did it fairly well. The thing about the Final Cut Pro, if you've ever used it, is it's highly optimized to the OS and it's constantly doing background rendering and you can also do proxy files and all that but I didn't do proxy files I took raw 4k footage from my <clears throat> Lumix G7 which I'm filming with now dropped it into the timeline edited a video exported it uh, when I was using it within Final Cut it was really smooth I mean a couple times it uh, stuttered just a hair but really really usable and I was just shocked at how well the MacBook Air handled it <clears throat> so fast forward a few days ago, I decided, hey, I'm going to go all in. I'm going to go with the Mac OS just because I like Final Cut Pro so much. So I went and I sold my Surface Pro 4 and my beloved iPad Pro, which I love because my goal is to just do all my video editing on this. I was doing it on my iPad Pro using LumaFusion, but I like Final Cut so much that I just wanted to use it as my primary photo editor so long story short i bought this guy this is the base model 2015 with the retina and the touch bar as you can see and the specs on this just the general specs i'm not going to get into the nitnoid crap it's quad core i7 16 gigabytes of ram 256 gigabytes of storage and a dedicated graphics card with two gigabytes which it's the amd i believe the 450 don't quote me on that but it's the lowest base model 15 inch you can get so this costs about 24, 2500 bucks. Now on Amazon, you can get this for 2250. So Best Buy price matched it for me. So I paid 2250 plus tax. And long story short, I gotta say the performance on this is really good. Now I know you can get a Windows machine for what this costs that is way more powerful, better display, you name it. Look at the Dell XPS 15. That's got a 4K display. Essentially a faster processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and it's got a uh, 1050, GTX 1050 in it, the mobile version, obviously. <clears throat> and that's $350 cheaper, just to give you a perspective. So yes, this is overpriced. Apple tax is, uh, is fully present. So let me give you kind of my thoughts on it. Like I said, the performance, I think, has been great. Now, if you are a Adobe Premiere Pro user, don't get this. Get a PC. This just really doesn't handle Premiere Pro that well. It takes a lot longer to export. 4K video is kind of choppy within the timeline. So I honestly don't recommend, if you're a Premiere Pro user, you shouldn't be buying a Mac. Now, if you're a Final Cut Pro user, I mean, it's a no brainer. If you're a heavy, heavy Final Cut Pro user doing long 4K videos and even 5K, you definitely want to get the 15 inch. Now, honestly, I think I'm going to return this just because of sticker shock and either get the 13 inch version of this or the 2015 model because Final Cut Pro is so optimized, it's kind of almost overkill. And for what the price of this is, and I will say the four USB type C ports, as you know, there's two on each side. I don't mind it, but it is kind of frustrating. I've got some dongles, but the one that frustrates me is not having a micro SD or an SD card slot. That's what I miss. And every video review I've watched on this, that is the biggest complaint. And this is supposed to be geared toward creatives. And I don't know if any current cameras that people use, it doesn't use a SD, SD card, excuse me. 
So I don't know what Apple was thinking there. I get the USB Type-C. That's going to be the future. I can accept it. Yada, yada, yada. But um, the other big feature on this is, of course, it's got the touch bar. Now, you've, there's a lot of videos out there if you want to see people using a touch bar. Long story short, the touch bar. Is it nice? Yes. Do you need it? Not at all. I think it's at this point in the development, I think it's more gimmicky than it is useful, to be honest with you. Because most people, at this point, if you're a veteran Mac user or Final Cut, all that, you're pretty much used to all the shortcut keys. And when you're using the touch bar... I think it slows your workflow down because it's you've got to look down at it for one and you got to move your hands up and do whatever you're doing on the touch bar. So nice to have, not needed, and I think the shortcut keys are just as fast, if not faster. So long story short, the touch bar is there. You can customize it. I like some aspects of it, but in no means is it a necessity and I just don't think it's really adding that much to the experience. So that's the touch bar. Other thing, the keyboard. It's got the new whatever, second generation butterfly keys. Coming from a MacBook Air that I used for the last month, I have to say that I absolutely hate this keyboard. So yes, you can get used to it, but you shouldn't have to get used to it. I mean, I got to say the MacBook Air, the trackpad on it, the keyboard to me, that's my favorite Mac experience as far as typing goes and using the trackpad. On this, they're very shallow. And they're extremely loud. I don't like it, to be honest with you. I just, I don't like the keyboard. The touchpad, it's ginormous. I don't get the point of it. The force touch crap and all that, I hate it. I don't like the trackpad. I will say, I used that MacBook Air for a month and I loved it. I loved the trackpad on it. Loved the way it felt. To me, it was the perfect size. The keyboard typing experience is really the favorite that I've used on a computer is the MacBook Air. I just... I like that keyboard. This, like I said, you can get used to it. However, I think I don't like the keyboard. I just don't like the way it feels. To me, the key travel is too shallow. I just, I don't like it. Yes, I can get used to it, but I shouldn't have to. Like I said, touchpad, I just don't like it. It's so big and I don't like the force touch technology. I just, I don't, I think it's a stupid feature. You may like it. Like I said, I'm just giving you my opinion. My opinion, I don't like it. I think it sucks. So overall, like I said, the display, it's awesome. It's not 4K. It's a nice, super bright display. Let me, I'm probably not going to be able to show you on this. I mean, I don't know how well it'll pick up, but the display is really nice and it gets extremely bright. Um, Let's see if I can, it's hard to show you when the camera's trying to focus on it, but um, it is a nice display. I do like it. No complaints with the display at all. And like I said, the build quality. This is super light for a 15 inch and it's super thin. I love the physical design of this. I think it's a beautiful computer. I don't mind that they got rid of the lighted Apple logo. I don't really care. I think this looks really sharp. So to me, this is like a piece of art. As far as build quality goes, you would be hard pressed to find a, another laptop that is built as nice as these are, to be honest with you. So build quality second none. performance is good, but you're paying for it. And then finally, battery life. Now, when this first came out, there were a lot of bugs. There were a lot of videos and the whole consumer report scandal where the battery was just crappy. Now, like I said, I've had this for only about three days now. And since then, there's been a few firmware updates. And with this, I've had no issue with battery. Um, I haven't done like a official drain test or any of that because I just, I'm not going to do that because I don't have eight hours to waste or whatever. But what I've been using it for so far, I see it getting to be about eight hours. I don't think you would have any problem getting through the day with this, using it for school, whatever. I think eight hours is a good estimate. Apple says 10, but realistically, I think it's going to be around eight. Now, when it comes to, obviously, if you're doing video editing like that, it's only going to be about three hours, and that's going to be with any computer you use. But just your normal stuff, word processing, Microsoft Office, surfing the web, YouTube, you're going to get eight hours easy, so no issue there. And the final feature on this is using Touch ID to unlock it. It's nice. I like it, but to me, it seems actually kind of slow. It seems like it takes about a second and a half, a second, you know, yeah. Now we're complaining about a second, first world problems, but it's not as fast as it is 
on your iPhone, I guess is what I'm getting at. So when I unlock my iPhone, I hit it, bam, it's within a fraction of a second. It seems like it's unlocked. It seems like it takes a little longer on here. Not a big deal. I mean, it's just kind of nitpicking, but it's nice to have, but I still prefer Windows Hello, to be honest with you. So long story short, to sum all that up, like I said, this was not an official giving you the specs and all that and showing you a ton of B-roll, pretty footage of, you know, the computer scrolling by and all that crap. I'll tell you from a real world perspective, I'm a real user. I'm not paid. Bought this with my own money. I'm not a professional guy. Um, I would pass on this. So if you're um, looking for a new Mac, that's great. I would still recommend getting a 2015 or getting the 13 inch or even the base model 13 inch to save you some money because the 15 inch is gorgeous, it's nice, it's great, but unless you're using Final Cut Pro for video editing, I really can't see what else you would use this for to be honest with you. Now, if you're looking to game, get a PC. If you're looking to use Premiere Pro, get a PC. Um, just basic computing stuff, word processing and all that, I would go with the 13 inch or the 2015. Um, MacBook Pro. Now, obviously, you want the 15 inch bigger screen, you got the money, have at it. I'm just telling you that for what this costs on the PC side, you can get a way more powerful machine. So, having said all that, ultimately it's up to you guys. As far as I'm concerned, I'm still going to mull it over a bit. I've got a, you know, a couple weeks to figure out if I want to keep this or return it, but I honestly think because of how optimized Final Cut Pro is, I'm going to return this for either the 2016 13-inch model or I'm going to get a 15-inch 2015 model and save myself some cash and get almost the same specs. So the other thing I forgot to mention before I close this out is the SSD speeds. Yes, you've seen all the videos. You've seen the benchmarks. Out of any computer I've ever used, this has the fastest SSD speeds you can get, bar none. So... Um, if that's a big deal to you, which to a point, the th speeds are so fast that it's not really, I mean, it's just ludicrous speed, but it is super fast. So it's got an awesome SSD in here. So to sum that up, if you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions on this, or you want to know why I switched, I plan on doing a whole nother video on why I switched to Mac, but just throw it in the comments below and I'll answer it as best I can. And if you've not subscribed, please do it. Go ahead and do so. Thanks.